please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will never miss any video from Acure Life Science Foundation. Myself, Dr. Shantanu R. Joshi, a clinician, a pharmacologist and a drug researcher. Dear students, today we are going to see the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs that is NSAID popularly known as NSAIDs. First we will see their mechanism of action. Before going into the details of mechanism of action of NSAIDs, one must understand the arachidonic acid pathway. Dear students, do remember when the cell get injured by any by any stimuli it may be physical it may be chemical it may be biological it may be immunological any anything anything which is going to injure the cell the cell membrane is made up of phospholipids and those phospholipids will get converted into arachidonic acid by the enzyme phospholipids most of the time the isoform of phospholipase, phospholipase A2 is used for the conversion of phospholipids into arachidonic acid. This arachidonic acid can further be converted into two different pathways. It can be converted into different metabolites by two different pathways. The important pathway is known as cyclo oxygenase pathway popularly known as cox pathway when the arachidonic acid enters the cox pathway it will give you three important inflammatory chemicals those are prostaglandins different forms of prostaglandins prostacyclines and thromboxin a2 popularly known as txa2 Dear students, do remember that in general inflammation, this pathway operates and prostaglandins are the major mediators of general inflammation. This is the important thing which I told you about cyclooxygenase pathway. The arachidonic acid can be converted into different metabolites by lipooxygenase pathway, LOX pathway. The LOX pathway initially will give you 5-H-P-E-T-E. It is known as 5-hydroxyperoxy-ecocetinoic acid. Further get converted into hydroxyecocetinoic acid. That is popularly known as 5-H-E-T-E. And 5-H-E-T-E is one metabolite and another metabolite is leukotrienes. LTEs. LTEs are different forms of LTEs are there but popularly known as leukotrienes as a group. These leukotrienes are very important because all of you know asthma is due to this type of leukotrienes. In asthma there is inflammation of the bronchus. In cyclooxygenase pathway we have seen the general inflammation that is the injury produced by some type of heat by physical object or the bacterial infection, viral infection or some immunological issues that is general inflammation. But so far this asthma is concerned the bronchial inflammation is related with a specific type of inflammation. The specific type of inflammation is due to leukotrains. And all of you know today to control asthma, to treat asthma, to prevent asthma we use leukotrain antagonists like Montelukast. Montelukast is a leukotrin antagonist, LT antagonist. Now, we know that arachidonic acid can be converted into by cyclooxygenase pathway into prostaglandin, prostacyclins and TXA2 or by lipooxygenase pathway into 5-HPETE and 5-HETE and leukotrins. In this lipooxygenase pathway, LTs are there and LTs are the major metadose of inflammation. Today, our focus will be on cyclooxygenase pathway. The cyclooxygenase enzyme itself present into two isoforms. 
popularly known as cyclo oxygenase 1 known as cox 1 and cyclo oxygenase 2 popularly known as cox 2 yes recently some work took place on the third isoform of cyclo oxygenase that is cox 3 the research studies are going on for cox 3 today we will discuss cox 1 and cox 2 the COX-1 isoform is constitutionally present in the cell. What do you mean by constitutionally present? I mean constitutionally present means it is always present in the tissue cells. COX-1 isoenzyme is constitutionally present. It is always present. The another form is known as COX-2 that is cyclooxygenase isoform 2 which is inducible. It is not regularly present. But in case of inflammation, the production of this isoenzyme can be stimulated, can be induced. And that's why COX-2 is an inducible isoenzyme of cyclooxygenase. Dear students, you have to remember some important things about COX-1. COX-1 isoenzyme is constitutionally present and is having some physiological roles. One of the simple role I would like to tell you about COX-1 isoenzyme is production of mucus, production of bicarbonate ion in the mucosa of the stomach is a function of COX-1 isoenzyme. This COX-1 isoenzyme plays a physiological role and protects the stomach from the gastritis and also from the peptic ulcers. This is the physiological role of this COX-1 isoenzyme. COX-1 isoenzyme is also related with pain. COX-1 isoenzyme is also related with fever. COX-1 isoenzyme is also related with aggregation of platelets. And then hence the blocking of this COX-1 will give you analgesic effect, will give you antipyretic effect and will give you antiplatelet aggregating effect. The COX-2 isoform is mainly concerned with inflammation. Blocking of COX-2 will produce anti-inflammatory effect. The conventional non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, for example aspirin, ibuprofen, these drugs are effective for blocking COX-1 as well as COX-2 isoenzyme. And that's why these original old conventional Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are anti-inflammatory, analgesic, antipyretic, antiplatelet. But these conventional NSAIDs are having the common side effect of gastritis, the nephrodoxicity is also related with it. All these are related with COX-1 pathway or COX-1 isoenzyme pathway. Now, there are some drugs in the market which preferentially inhibits COX-2 isoenzyme and are having less effect on COX-1. These are known as preferential COX-2 inhibitors. The best example of this preferential COX-2 inhibitor is meloxicam, nebimetone, etodolac. These are the drugs they preferentially block COX-2. They are having more effect on the COX-2 and less effect on COX-1. The COX-2 effect is 10 to 20 times more than COX-1 effect. And further research gave you selective COX-2 inhibitors. These selective COX-2 inhibitors are having more activity for COX-2 than COX-1 and this effectivity, this activity is 50 times, more than 50 times on COX-2 and less than 50 times in COX-1. These are known as selective COX-2 inhibitors. The suffix COXIB is used to denote these drugs. The best example is iterocoxib, then selecoxib. These coxibs are selective COX-2 inhibitors. They purely inhibit COX-2 and have a negligible effect on the COX-1. And the effect is that they do not have any gastric issues. Their side effect on the gastrus is equal to the effect of the placebo. Now we are having the three NSAIDs, one conventional NSAIDs. They block COX-1 and COX-2. Then the second group of preferential COX-2 inhibitors. They affect COX-1 and COX-2 both but the effect on COX-2 is more. And then the third group we are having selective COX-2 inhibitors. They act more on the COX-2 and very negligibly on the COX-1. 
dear students this is a very important chart related with arachidonic acid pathway dear students all of you know that nsaids should not be used in the patients of asthma especially aspirin should not be used in the patients of asthma we call them aspirin sensitive asthma individual the same pathway will explain you can explain the role of aspirin in production of induction of asthma when we are using aspirin it will is going to block the cyclo oxygenase pathway naturally the more arachidonic acid will be available to get converted into converted through lipo oxygenase pathway and there will be more production of lts when you block cox pathway there is enhancement in the lox pathway and will produce more lts more lts lts leukotrienes leukotrienes are the major mediators of asthma and that's why you should cautiously use nsaids in the patients of asthma preferably you should try to avoid the use of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs in asthma the same thing the same pathway the same chart is very useful to explain why corticosteroids are the strongest anti inflammatory drugs of the world dear students all of you know that the reaction starts with the conversion of phospholipids into arachidonic acid and arachidonic acid will get converted by either cyclo oxygenase pathway or by lipo oxygenase pathway dear students corticosteroids stops the conversion of phospholipids into arachidonic acid when the conversion of phospholipid into arachidonic acid has blocked there will be no conversion of arachidonic acid there is no production of arachidonic acid and ultimately there is blocking of cyclo oxygenase pathway that is general inflammation and lipo oxygenase pathway that is a specific inflammation like in asthma and that's why the both the pathways will be blocked by the single drugs single type of drugs and that is corticosteroid because corticosteroids block the conversion of phospholipid into arachidonic acid by blocking the enzyme phospholipase steroids block phospholipase and that's why corticosteroids are the strongest anti inflammatory drugs of this world thank you dear students i know that you like my videos then please share and subscribe thank you